Here's a review of uh, general chemistry exam one. We'll go through the answers. Uh, if you don't have time to do this in class, then you can be able to watch this recording. So number one, uh, why study chemistry? Uh, answer is D, all of the above. We want to help us inform us about our world, help us be a, make better informed decisions, and help us learn about techniques to identify and solve problems. Uh, number two, uh, science of chemistry may involve uh, observation, hypothesis development, experimentation. The answer is D, all of the above. Uh, which state of matter consists of particles and regular repeating uh, <coughs> three-dimensional geometric patterns uh, as a solid, basically crystals. That's a definition of a crystal up there. Uh, four. Which state of matter consists of particles held tightly together, uh, but not rigidly. These particles are held together with strong attractive forces and are in close contact with one another, but allowed to flow over one another. The flow there gives you the clue that this for sure is uh, liquids. Uh, five, uh, which is, uh, is composed of particles with enough energy to completely overcome the attractive forces between them. And that, of course, that means they're free to move. So, of course, that's a gas. It's free to move around. Uh, six, which is a solution. Uh, we have air, which is a combination of many things. Uh, look at water, which is one thing. Uh, it happens to be a different state of that compound. Uh, solid iron, which again is an alloy of steel and carbon. Once again, it's one thing. It's Oh, that's wrong. Uh, solid iron, Fe, is just iron, one thing, the element iron. It's not steel, which is the alloy. So solid iron is one thing. And then soil, which is not a liquid, so it's not a solution, uh, or a gas, which is can be the only two things that can be solutions are liquids and gases. And so uh, the answer is A, air. Uh, number seven picture there. Uh, which of the following diagram represents a solution? So you see the, the two dark, you have the dark um, and the light, and in your particular uh, version of the uh, uh, test, it was a little easier to see. This one is a, a, bad, kind of a little bit of a bad copy, but basically you have two things in a liquid, because um, they're freely moving. And they're not rigidly together. B, you have two things in a solid, so that's not a solution. Uh, C, you have one liquid, things are kind of moving around a little bit, and D, you have one solid. So the answer is A there, two things in a liquid is a solution. Uh, eight, not enough people got right to make it a valid question, so I, I got rid of that, so any, everybody who got that wrong uh, got points back for that. Um, but which of the following represents an element uh, letter A there, you have a dark circle and a light circle together. That's a two-element compound. Uh, in B, you have a diatomic gas. You have the two elements put together, fluorine, chlorine, etc. Uh, C, you have two things in a liquid. They happen to be separate from one another, like um, if you have, well, any two things that are in a liquid. If you have water and you have sodium chloride, you have all those ions together. This has to be two things. Um, and then D, you have a combination of something that's diatomic and something that's atomic, monoatomic, together. Um, and so only one of those things is a single element, which is going to be B, which is a, a single element. So, uh, but not enough people got that one right, so that was, like I said, taken out of the mix. Uh, number nine. Uh, how would you adjust a burner if it was yellow and smoky flame? Um, the adjusting of the, the gas cop stock is, uh, the cock, uh, is uh, on and off for the gas. That has nothing to do with the yellowness of the flame or not. Needle valve is the amount of gas coming to there, so that'll make your, your uh, flame higher or lower, but not adjust its yellowness or smokiness. Uh, turning the barrel to allow more air in, turns it from yellow smoky to uh, the blue flame, which is what you want, so that's the answer. Then D, turning the barrel to let less in, turns it from a, if you had the appropriate amount, it would turn it from the blue flame 
to a yellow and smoky flame. So you want C to make it the correct kind of flame from yellow and smoky to blue. Uh, prefix for number 10, 4,000 is kilo. Uh, significant figures for 1.500 would be four because the zeros uh, don't need to be there. So they're there for a reason. So they're significant. Uh, 12, uh, you have the uh, the 1360 with no dot at the end. Uh, the zero is a placeholder, so it's not significant. So it's because you could write it a different way. You could write it in a scientific notation without the zero. So then only those three non-zero digits are significant. Uh, how many significance? How many digits are significant in the zero zero uh, zero point zero zero five? Uh, once again, uh, all the zeros are placeholders. You don't have to have any of them to write the number. So there's only one significant figure there. Uh, 14. Uh, the density of the solid uh, is uh, 1.36 grams per milliliter. Specific gravity of the substance is, so you have specific gravity equals the density of the liquid or solid over the density of water. So if you have 1.36 grams per milliliter divided by 1 gram per milliliter, you get 1.36 with no units because all the units cancel. So that's C. Uh, 15, uh, 1 kilometer uh, equals 1,000 milliliters, 1,000 meters, sorry, 1,000 meters. Uh, answer D there. Uh, temperature from 400 degrees Celsius is equal to how many Kelvin? So Kelvin equals Celsius plus, plus 273. So you have 400 plus 273 gives you 673 Kelvin is the answer there for 16. Uh, 17, we have the temperature uh, of 40 degrees Celsius is equal to which Fahrenheit temperature? So we know that Fahrenheit equals uh, 1.8 times the degree Celsius. Do that first, then you add 32 to it. So you have Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times 40 plus the 32. So you have 72 plus 32. So we have 104 uh, D as the answer there. Uh, 18, uh, the solid substance has a density of 4.36 grams per milliliter. We have the volume of 36 grams and in the substance so then we have the density uh, is equal to the mass divided by volume you have then solve for volume so volume equals mass divided by density so volume equals 30 grams divided by the 4.36 uh, uh, grams per milliliter so then you have 6.8 milliliters as the answer there in B. Uh, nine, or 19 there, uh, the answer that was given was wrong. Um, when I worked this out, um, uh, the answer that was given was a C, which was not correct. So I went through and uh, anybody who had nine marked wrong, I give them points back for that. Uh, so the proper way to work this is um, four inches, and then you convert that from uh, 2.56 centimeters per inch. The inches cancel and then you end up with uh, 10.16 which is 10.2 for significant figures centimeters. Uh, 20 there when you're adding uh, your numbers. Zoom in here a little bit to see that a little better. Um, you have you add those numbers in there. You have to then take that uh, the least significance. So basically you line them up one on top of another and then since 13 is the least significant of those when you add them up what's left over is the value that is can only have that same least significance so remember so addition and subtraction it's not about the number of significant figures but the accuracy or the significance of the least significant of those so in this case uh, we have that ones place so a is the answer uh, 22 how many significant figures should be in the answer uh, when you have uh, one, two, three, four, five significant figures versus three, so then three significant figures uh, would be uh, the answer there. Uh, 22, um, how many zeros 
are significant in the number, and basically all of them are because there's a dot at the end, so all of them are significant. So when you add them up, you have four, so there you go. Uh, 23, you have the density of copper. What's the volume of uh, 12 grams of copper? Once again, you have density equals mass over volume. So then you solve for density. Then you put in the density, uh, the mass on top, 12 grams. Density, which is given in the, in, in the pro problem, uh, is 8.96 grams per milliliter. Uh, those cancel, and since the milliliter is underneath, it becomes the uh, unit when all is said and done. So you have 1.39, uh, 339, and then that becomes 1.34 milliliters. So the answer is B. Uh, 24, a cube measuring 13 centimeters on the edge. What's the volume? So you have uh, 13 times 13 times 13 centimeters, uh, which is the... Uh, the uh, 2,197 uh, centimeters cubed, because there's three of them. So that uh, then is uh, answer C there. Uh, number 25, you have a car that gets uh, 25.6 miles per gallon of gas. A full tank of gasoline it contains uh, 56.8 liters of gas. How many miles can this car travel on that full tank of gasoline? So you have two conversion factors there. You have liters to quarts and you have gallons to quarts. So you start out there with the uh, given, which is the uh, 56.8 liters of gas in the tank. Uh, then you convert that uh, from liters to quarts. So you then use that con first conversion process. Then use the second conversion process to convert it um, from quarts to gallons. And then you use uh, the last piece of known information, which was the car traveling at 25.6 miles per gallon. And so then your liters and liters, quarts and quarts, gallons and gallons all cancel. You're left with miles. So 56.8 times 1.057 times 1 times 26 25.6 that all then divided by 4 gets you 384.22 uh, the first number there the 56.8 uh, as well as the last number the 25.6 are the givens they have three significant figures the two in the, in the middle don't matter because they're infinitely significant uh, they don't have impact because they're conversion factors. Uh, so then the answer then is 384 miles, answer D. Uh, 26. Uh, when expressed in proper significant uh, scientific notation, uh, 4,289, uh, you basically move that decimal point over, 1, 2, 3, uh, then that generates 4.289 times 10 to the third. And that happens to be then uh, answer C. 27, when expressed in proper scientific notation, the number 0 .00364 uh, is. So you start here and you go one, two, three in that direction and to the right. So it's a negative. So 3.64 times 10 to the minus third uh, happens to be then uh, answer D. Uh, number 28. Express the number 2.64 times 10 to the fourth in decimal notation, so 2.64. And then once again, we move that decimal, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we can add the zeros on there, so then that's 26,400 is the correct answer, letter C there. Uh, 29 is using density. The empty glass tube weighs 37.3 grams. Uh, when filled to the rim with water, it weighs uh, 54.1 grams. Uh, what is the volume of the glass tube? So once again, we're doing a density. And this time, once again, we're doing volume. So we take the density. Density equals uh, mass times volume. Um, then we want to go in there and can solve that for volume. So now we have mass over density again. Now our mass then is 
the mass of the full container minus the mass of the empty container to find the mass of the water. That's where probably some of you made your mistake there is just taking one of those two masses as the mass, and that's not correct. You need to subtract those two things to find the actual mass of the actual water. Then you take then the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter or one gram per cubic centimeter. So then you have uh, those units are going to cancel. And then you have 16.8, which is the, the, the subtraction of those over one. So then 16.8 uh, cubic centimeters is the answer, which is A there. Uh, 30, police car at high speed chase traveling at a speed of 75 miles per hour. Chase covers uh, 72.3 miles of the roadway uh, for uh, how long were the police chasing the suspects uh, and it gives you the one hour to 60 minute conversion factor there so you have uh, the given which is the uh, 72.3 miles uh, of the chase uh, you have your uh, conversion uh, from the given as well, how many uh, miles per hour were they traveling, so miles gets converted to hours, and then you use your conversion uh, process of going from hours to minutes. And so then the, the, minute, the miles are going to cancel, the hours are going to cancel, and you're left with minutes. So 72.3 times 60 divided by 75 uh, gets you then 57.84 minutes. Uh, we then look at our two uh, givens. We have the 72.3, uh, which is three significant figures. And we have the 75, which is two significant figures. Uh, so therefore, we're going to have two significant figures when all is said and done. So it's 58 minutes, and that will be answer B. Uh, 31, uh, the following alternative represent numbers as they are represented in three significant figures. Uh, which is then expressed incorrectly. Uh, so in this particular case, you have uh, 89.3320. When you would go then to uh, its three significant figures, that would then go to uh, 890, because it would round down. And here the answer is 891. So that is incorrect. The other ones are correct. Take a look then at 32. Uh, perform the following set of operations and choose the alternative that expresses the results to proper number of significant figures. Uh, you have 65.43 uh, uh, minus uh, 43.2. Uh, if you line those up, once again, uh, 43.2 uh, is the level of accuracy uh, so the, to the tenth, to the point two is the is the accuracy there so then that's what you have on the top and then you then on the bottom you have the uh, 1.232 2 times 10 to the minus third and you can write both of those um, out uh, the bottom number has uh, four significant figures the top has three significant figures when you do the division so therefore this the division part then is the number of significant figures not the precision of the uh, of the individual measurement so then our answer then is uh, what is um, uh, 18 thousand and forty three point eight three so one eight zero four three point eight three uh, we can only have three significant figures so when we move that over then we then leave the the eight the zero there so one point eight zero is our answer because that has to then express since it's not needed in the scientific notation since it's there it must be significant so then that gives you your significant answer so then that's letter C there uh, 33 we have the 54.331 uh, divided by the uh, 2.345 uh, minus the 1.521 uh, both numbers are in the bottom when you subtract them they're both uh, accurate down to the thousandths and so then your answer can be then in the thousandths as well 0 0.824 uh, 
uh, that had three significant figures, with a 54.331 has five significant figures. So the answer, when it's all said and done, can only have three significant figures. So the 65.936 has to be then rounded to 65.9 for the three significant figures, uh, D being the answer. Uh, 34. Uh, cations, which is a cation. Uh, cations are positive, so it's Fe plus 3. Uh, all matters composed of elements, approximately how many elements are there? So there's about 100, give or take a couple that are man-made that exist, but they're approximately 100. Uh, the smallest particle of an element that can exist uh, is an atom. So we have an element, the smallest part of an element that is still an element is an atom. Below that, if you get to the neutron, etc., they are no longer elements. They are subatomic particles that have not the properties of the element. Uh, 37, most elements are rare. Uh, how many elements make up approximately 99% of the mass of the Earth, the oceans, and the atmosphere? So we have um, two elements, oxygen and sulfur, that make up 74%, 70, almost 75%, and then the other ones, aluminum, iron, uh, calcium, uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, hydrogen, and titanium, uh, then those 10 elements together make up 99% of the Earth, uh, the crust, the oceans, and the atmosphere, the crusters. So those are 10 there that make up that majority. Uh, the most abundant element in the Earth's crust is oxygen. Talked about that up there. Uh, 39. Uh, majority of elements uh, are metals. So that uh, we had that, you know, the biggest part of the periodic table there are metals, and that's they are. Uh, at room temperature, the majority of metals are solids. The majority of all elements are solids, but the majority of metals are solids as well. The majority of non-metals are solids as well. Uh, 41 on the periodic table, a vertical column contains elements with similar properties. These vertical columns are called groups. Periods are rows across the periodic table. Rows are rows. Series are also called rows as well. So periods, rows, and series are all horizontal on the, on the, on the periodic table. Groups are the only thing there that's vertical. Elements, 42 there. Elements on the periodic table are placed in order of increasing atomic number. You're going up as you include, as you add the protons as you go across. So atomic number is going up. The uh, atomic mass is an effect of that, but they are organized by atomic number. They're not organized by mass. They're organized by atomic number. It just so happens that in most cases, the mass goes up as well. So this is why, atomic number is why, atomic mass is a side effect of that. Uh, 43, the atomic mass is approximately the same as twice as the number of particles combined. So when you combine those two particles, which are they? So protons and electrons are the basis of most of the atomic mass, A there. Uh, 44, atomic number is the number of protons, which is uh, C there. Uh, 45, which element? Uh, of this group is non-reactive. Hydrogen, extremely reactive. Oxygen, quite reactive. Um, uh, iron, not so much reactive, but per quite reactive. Uh, helium, uh, completely unreactive. It's a noble gas, not reactive at all. And then 46, uh, which element forms diatomic molecules? So you had to know those. Uh, chlorine is the only one in that list that will form a diatomic molecule. Take a look at uh, 47. How many atoms of oxygen are indicated in the formula? So we have Fe and then NO3 taken twice, which is how you say that. Um, so Fe equals 1. There's 1 Fe there. Whenever there's not a number, it's assumed to be a 1. Uh, N, nitrogen, is 1 times 2 because of the brackets there. So you have the the two out here on the outside, so that two gets times throughout both of these, 
So 2 times the unwritten 1 is 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6 for oxygen. So how many oxygens? 6. Um, which is a compound? Uh, air is a mixture of a variety of unrelated things. Uh, lead is an element. Iron is also an element, and water is a compound uh, created of the elements hydrogen and oxygen, H and O, in the formula H2O. So it's the only compound that's there. Uh, 49, which is a characteristic of all non-metals. Um, they're always gases, no. They're shiny in appearance, no, that's metals. Uh, combine only with metals, nope, you can have non-metals combined with one another as well. Um, they are poor conductors of heat as well as poor conductors of electricity. That is true. Uh, 50. An ionic compound is held together by uh, the attractive forces between the ions of different charges. That was the definition of ionic compound, like sodium chloride. One of the two elements loses the electron, the other one gains it, one becomes positive one becomes negative, and then you have those attractive forces between those separate charges, and that force of attractive attraction holds them together. Uh, the nitrate group is NO3 to the minus one. How many nitrate groups are in this formula? So when you have the sodium, and you have it taken one time with nitrate, you have one sodium and one nitrate together, so it being positive when it forms, nitrate being negative, that's balanced, therefore there's one. Um, which cannot be broken down chemically or physically into a simpler substance. Um, sugar uh, is a compound and can be broken down. Salt is a compound and then could be broken down into something similar, into something simpler. Salt is, in most cases, common salt is sodium chloride. You could break it down into sodium and chloride if you wanted to. Seawater is a mixture, therefore it could be broken down. You could take the salts out of the seawater, and then the water itself could be broken down. Uh, copper could not be. It is an element. It cannot be chemically or physically made any simpler than copper, which is the most abundant element in the universe. Hydrogen is everywhere in the universe. Our sun is made out of hydrogen. We have lots of hydrogen everywhere in the universe. Uh, 54. Which element is the most similar to calcium? Uh, similar elements are those that are in its same vertical group. And so when you take a look at things that are similar to calcium, what's in its group, you have uh, BEMG, beryllium, uh, uh, magnesium, calcium, uh, strontium, and barium. And so those are all in the group. So one, the only one of those that's in its same group, its, its same family, uh, is strontium there. And then a homogeneous mixture of metals are called an alloy. That's what I talked about earlier, steel. Steel is an alloy of, of iron and carbon together. Uh, so that's uh, a, exam uh, number one, and those are the answers to that exam. And uh, if you have any more questions, we can uh, talk about it at a later point.